Welcome back to the Bulwark Coast of Hollywood. My name is Sonny Bunch. I'm culture editor at the Bulwark. Uh, and I'm very pleased to be joined today by Jeffrey Harmon. Uh, now, Jeffrey is the co founder and chief content officer uh, at Angel Studios. He co founded Aura Brush Inc. in 2009, served as the CEO there. Um, but we're, we're here to talk about uh, the biggest box office success of the summer, I think, or at least the most surprising box office success of the summer. I think the the, the movie that if you had, you know, pulled up a chart and you were, you were putting your um, fantasy box office draft together, I don't know that Sound of Freedom would have been at the top of most people's list, uh, but it is... Uh, at least in terms of return on investment, aiming to be one of the biggest grossing movies of the year, but most successful movies of the year. Uh, and it has a really interesting kind of backstory and business model. Uh, and there's lots to, dis- to discuss here. Uh, Jeffrey, thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having uh, me. So let's, let's talk about... Um, how you guys finance uh, and fund and find the audience for these movies. Because I think this is a super uh, interesting business model that uh, a lot of people don't understand. I, 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 I tweet uh, uh, constantly. I tweet constantly. But I tweet a lot about box office stuff. And anytime I tweet about Sound of Freedom, I get a lot of questions about like, well, you know, is this success real? Is it astroturfed? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and that does not track with what I'm hearing from exhibitors, most of whom uh, are not reporting, you know, my massive empty audi- auditoriums. They, they say they're full and uh, have people show up. But I want to I want to explain to people how this works. So Sound of Freedom, how do you guys decide uh, to make this movie in the first place? What's what's the uh, what's the process there like for deciding that Sound of Freedom is going to be an Angel Studios picture? Well, the first the first step is we have what's called the Angel Guild, and so Angel Studios is a disruptor in the Hollywood space because we've rebuilt the entire over the last ten years we've rebuilt the entire system from the ground up to go around Hollywood system. It's it, we're doing it outside of the system, and so the first the first step is we have what's called the Angel Guild, and the Angel Guild is a hundred thousand angel investors. Or that are regular people, they could have invested just down to a hundred bucks or even fifty dollars into a project, and they are stakeholders inside of the Angel Network. And what each every week we get sixty plus filmmakers submitting to Angel Studios, submitting projects. They'll submit full movies. They'll submit prototype movies, pilots for TV series, uh, animatics. They're they're submitting all kinds of things. Those anything that qualifies goes into the Angel Guild for review, and the Angel Guild is this hundred thousand p- everyday people who go in and review the content, and they ask them. They get asked two questions. If you watch a movie like Sound of Freedom, they watch Sound of Freedom, and they they ask them. They get asked number one: Does this project amplify light? So the the question is: Will what does this project? Um, like we don't want nihilistic content. We don't want there, there's a certain type of certain brand of content we want, which is family safe, and it amplifies light. It does it it changes people for better after seeing the content. They have very little like time regretted is really small after watching our content. They don't they don't regret the time they spent watching it. Um, so it does this amplify light. They get yes, no, and then the second question they get asked after they watch a a, a submission is the guild gets asked, how would you feel if this was never turned into an Angel Studios original? Or how would you feel if this never went to theaters with Angel Studios? Those types of questions. And they get asked, they get three answers. One is very disappointed. Number two is somewhat disappointed. Number three is not disappointed. It's not that good. And so this this question forces them to ask the question for themselves. Because if you ask a customer, um, what do you think about this movie? They're going to start saying, well, what do I think about other people are going to think about this movie? That's what critics try to do usually is they're trying to say, what, what is the, what's the world going to think about this movie? And what we want them to answer is, what do I personally think of this movie? How would I feel if this was never turned into a film or into an Angel original series? And then the very top ones every month, the very the, the top guild selections are the ones that we go in and we um, turn into Angel Angel Studios series. Mm-hmm. 
or Angel Studios movies, and the Sound of Freedom scored near the top of anything we've ever had submitted. Um, we've also had some others that are very good, and there's some that are coming that are very high, like the movie Cabrini has scored super high in the guild, or the movie After Death, which is coming in October, that one has scored crazy high on the on the guild. And, and so for the first things we've learned about this, just to see on this, and then I'll get to the, the crowdfunding aspect, um, is that the Angel Guild basically gives us a preview of what the Rotten Tomato score is going to look like. Because we have 100,000 people that are from all over the world scoring these films in advance in a private setting. And then we get a preview, the filmmaker gets a preview of what the audience actually thinks of the movie before it comes out. And in the case, yeah, can I can I just uh, interrupt here for one question? Uh, mm-hmm. So when you say so, you say there's there's a hundred thousand people in this angel guild. You you basically have a one hundred thousand person strong focus group for each of these movies. Before yep. that's I mean that's pretty impressive. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So so not everybody rates every single movie, but it's a hundred thousand people that are con- that are actively going in and rating content. And the, I mean, with 60 filmmakers a week, not all 100,000 can watch sure. 60 different projects or whatever, but they're all, they're all watching some and then we get to statistical significance. So then, um, then you, you go and you take the ones that are the winners and they do with a movie release, a theater release, a theatrical release, we do, we crowdfund the P&A. So prints mm-hmm. and advertising for those who don't know what P&A is, the prints comes from the terminology uh, back when movies were uh, on film, you'd send out a roll, a printed roll of film to all the different theaters, and that was the cost of the prints. Now it's just sending out posters and hard drives or uh, a file through the internet. But but prints and advertising, that's what it means. So the prints and advertising are paid for by everyday investors who come in and they crowdfund. Instead of going to a big loan or a bank, you crowdfund a loan for the P&A or a, 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 sh- a profit share of the project, and then they can get up to 120% back on their investment. And this has happened. Um, the, his only son has already returned 120% to its investors that invested in it. And in, in March is when we did his only son. That was a number three box office release at Easter. And then Sound of Freedom will return it very soon. Um, as soon as all the, the, just the processes get done and then they'll have 120% on their investment that they put in. So f- there were 7,000, around 7,000 investors that, that put in $5 million of P&A to get Sound of Freedom off into theaters. Um, that's a small P&A budget compared to $100 million for, $100 million for Indiana Jones or something, but, but we know how to, how to spend that efficiently and get a return on investment for, those, um, for the crowd. Then the, the reason why this is a big deal is if you take the P&A money and the crowd raises it, the crowd actually, like, the, the angel guild who's investing in these projects, they, once they're invested, they're going to show up to the theaters and they're going to bring all their friends to the theaters. So your initial, you have a, you know, a seven, 10,000 army of people because each, each one of each investor represents a family or, you know, a group of people. And you've got this multi, multi thousand person army out dragging all their friends and neighbors to the movie because now they're they're a stakeholder. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the the thing that most obviously calls to mind, of course, is something like Kickstarter, right, where you you uh, contribute to get something created, and then once you get it, you share it, and people are like, "Oh, that's pretty cool. I I want want mm-hmm. want some." Yep. So, yeah, and I think I think the motivation is the same as Kickstarter, um, meaning that you're 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 you want something to exist. You want this film to exist. You want this movie to exist. You want it to be in theaters, and so you're helping. But the reward is better than in Kickstarter because you can actually get it. Like if I put in a thousand dollars, I can get twelve hundred dollars back in a few months if the movie is mm-hmm. successful, right? I can get one hundred and twenty percent of what I did, and so there's there's an extra extra element of uh, strength to to this versus a sure. Kickstarter. No, I remember uh, a few years back the. Um the, the Broken Lizard guys were trying to do this with uh, uh, Super Troopers 2 or something. But that was for the whole the whole project. It was, you know, it was they were yep. they were they were mm-hmm. looking for equity. 
and there are people to do that. Like there, there's a movie that's um, in post production right now called The Shift, mm -hmm. and the filmmaker for The Shift, Brock Heasley from California, Fresno, he uh, built. He was a comic book writer. Uh, he he did comic books and. He decided he was going to get into directing. He directed a short film that was like 12 minutes long. He made it for 500 bucks, calling in favors from friends. But the storytelling was so good in this that he was able to um, use that to raise. Um, eventually, he released like uh, an audio script of his um, of his entire movie. He did an, like an audiobook version, essentially, of his entire movie. Released it to the Angel Guild and to the crowd, and between that and then he did an animatic of his movie he did a bunch of stuff that he kind of needs to do in pre-production anyway and and was honing it but over a period of time he raised he did it he got 6.5 million dollars in investment for this film and then got sean Astin's part mm -hmm. of it from lord of the rings and stranger things and you got neil mcdonough from band of brothers who plays the 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 benefactor? Who's the 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 evil? You know the the bad mm -hmm. guy. And then you've got um, and then you've got Liz Tabish, who's the star in The Chosen, and, and Paris Patel, who's also a star in The Chosen. So you have these these different. He he. This first time filmmaker was able to take his script and just keep building on itself. He built and he crowdfunded and built a following where he now has a $6.5 million movie that's ready, getting ready for theaters right now that um, you can see the trailer if you go on YouTube and just search for the shift trailer. But the this movie is, um, I mean, he just leapfrogged. Most directors are are spending years and years and years knocking down studios doors, begging for money. And he just went straight to the crowd and with the angel model and then raised uh, enough to do a $6.5 million did film. Did he do the fundraising through your guys' platform? Yeah, he did it through the angel funding mm -hmm. platform, which is a, a – it's a it's a different company, mm -hmm. but it's it, it licenses our name. But angel funding is a, is a platform that does SEC – regulated crowdfunding mm -hmm. um let me let me ask the uh it's it's funny because i saw the, i saw the trailer for the shift before i saw sound of freedom and i it was the first time i'd i'd seen it and uh it, it was it was it was i was a little surprised that you guys were making what looks like kind of like a multiverse movie that's yeah, sci-fi sci yeah. yeah yeah it's sci-fi yeah. <laughs> i mean it has a it has some some uh elements that make it very unique um it's it's a uh it's this one in particular is based on the story of Job, mm -hmm. but th th those kind of stories are timeless. Meaning, it can be in a sci-fi version of a person losing everything to an enemy that's trying to break them. You know yeah. that it's. But this one's done through a multiverse system. Yeah. It's a it's an allegory. Yeah, I mean, it, it is interesting. Again, I you know, I, I when I went to see Sound of Freedom, I was expecting. Um, I was expecting it to be a little more heavy-handed on the uh, the 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 religious angle because everyone you know had just kind of described <laughs> this movie as you know oh it's the Christian film from yeah it got labeled right. it got labeled right. and, uh, and it, it, it I think I think competition like we've got um, we're a little theater coming up in a gigantic space I, a little a little studio coming up in a gigantic space and they've got you know, a, a kind of an oligopoly. It's not a monopoly, but it's multiple big parties that kind of run the whole show. And we're coming up outside of that system. And so immediately, once once they saw at first they ignore you, then they mock you, then they laugh at you, or then they fight you, then you win. And we're, we kind of entered this, um, this, this mocking fighting stage where there's all kinds of labels. They try to label the movie just to see if they can throw friction in the gears to keep the movie from spreading and that they're not they're not real labels but they have big enough microphones that they were that people were very confused when they went to the movie and they're like why don't these labels apply to this movie and it's because the labels just flat out weren't mm -hmm. true well let's i let's discuss one of those labels cuz i mean i this is uh 
a a thing I I again get a lot from people when I mention Sound of Freedom uh, when I'm just tweeting about the box offices. Oh, the, the you know the QAnon movie. Um, so I I, <laughs> I I want I I I feel like I have to ask. You know, how do you guys respond to the mm-hmm. suggestions that this is a movie that appeals to uh, conspiracy theorists and you know cultists and and uh, that sort of thing? Yeah, it, it, I mean it's it it just makes me laugh. There's um. There, there, you've got this really big industry that's trying to slow down this movie. Everybody who's seen this movie knows it has nothing to do with conspiracy theories. There's a really great YouTuber called Shoe on Head, Shoe on Head, and she does this review that has like 600,000 views in the last week or something. And, um, and she just, just goes through and she's just like, I want my money back. Where was the, conspiracy theory movie that I was promised by the media. This is just a normal good movie that's about a guy who saves kids from sex traffickers. And she's just like, where is, where's my, where's my, uh, where's the story that the media told me not to watch this for and why I went to watch it? She said, I went to watch it just to see all those crazy conspiracies. And she's like, and it's just a normal movie. <laughs> and, and that's the case across the board. Like everybody who's seen this movie knows that it has nothing to do with conspiracy th- theories. And, and if you're on the fence and you're wondering, get a free ticket at angel.com slash free tickets. There's a pool of free tickets that other people have bought for you that they want you to see this movie and go watch the movie. Angel.com slash free tickets. Go get a free ticket. It, I don't feel bad about using a free ticket to go watch the movie. And um, and you will you can decide for yourself. I, I it, It's... Um, it labels are the way that you normally slow something down, uh, especially if they don't have a big enough megaphone or microphone. But, uh, but I, you know, I think I think there's four different th- reasons why those conspiracy theory ideas have circulated. Uh, she on head. She says that the, like towards the middle of the video, she's going through this process, and she's not like by no means a conservative. Um, I, I mean, clearly not uh, when you're watching the 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 the, the video. And it, what's really interesting is Newsweek just did a poll on this movie, and they found out that. Republicans are like um, 60 something percent and Democrats are like six points less than Republicans on this film, meaning they're almost equal. Mm-hmm. The, 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 in the, terms the of Democrats uh, love the I'm movie. I'm sorry, in terms of approval, like thumbs up, thumbs down or thumbs up, thumbs down and viewership. Okay. Democrats are showing up at, at equal, almost equal rates, just barely mm-hmm. less. And they're loving the movie just as much as the other side. The 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 narrative just isn't holding. It's not holding water. Yeah. Well, and yeah. um, go ahead. Well, this is I. Whenever uh, again, I've had a couple of these conversations, and I tell people like, look, this is a pretty straightforward movie about the evils of child pornography and sex trafficking. And I would very strongly mm-hmm. recommend against suggesting that this is what QAnon is, because if you start telling them that, they're gonna be like, well, what what else is this? It actually legitimizes yeah. th- th- this, these crazy ideas, yeah. right? It, it, it legitimizes something because the movie's so legit. Trying to label it as some conspiracy theory actually legitimizes conspiracy yes. theories, which is a bad thing. We don't want to do that. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. So let's uh, let, let's talk about the 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 free ticket situation here. Because all right. So uh, so you know we're looking at we look at the box office. It's one hundred and fifty two million, I think, so far. Um, yep, uh, yep. Uh, with the, the most up to date numbers, uh, by the time this goes up, it'll be a little more than that because uh, this this posts on Saturday. Um, but the uh, the 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 numbers here are amazing. I like just I, I, I this is objectively yes. yeah. objectively not not a you know uh, this is not my opinion. I think it's like the. Th- Third or fourth largest independent film of all time. Huge, now. huge numbers. Um, uh, and whenever, uh, again, I mention them, you will get a contingent of people will say, "Well, how are we supposed to know? Uh, you know, how many of those ticket sales are real? What percent are you know uh, blocks sold to church groups and with empty theaters and blah?" So let's let's just talk about the actual mechanics of how the box office is. Uh, calculated. My understanding from from your website and from talking to a few people is that the only uh, time that a one of the pay it forward tickets is accounted against the box office gross is when it's redeemed by somebody on your website. Is that right? So if you when you when you go to get a pay it forward, so, so let me just walk you through a customer's mm. point of view. 
You go to angel.com slash free tickets. You sign up for a free ticket. You put your email in. You get a you get a code. That code's good for a few days. And you can go then to Adam Tickets as, a, as, as an individual. You have to create an account. And you can only get two tickets or one ticket, depending on how the supply and demand is, uh, per person. And... Then you go to Adam Tickets, and it will only work. That 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 code will only work for a few days, and it only works for Sound of Freedom. And so you go in, and you it, well, Adam Tickets is one way. Sometimes you'll get a ticket to Fandango. Sometimes you know it just depends on which theaters, and mm-hmm. there's, there's a lot of different partnerships we have built out for this. And so, and then you go and you redeem your code when you check out, and that code is then used to buy your ticket. Does that make sense? Yep. So you're you're actually redeeming your ticket directly with the, sure. the theaters, not uh, we're just giving you a code sure. to go redeem your ticket. So, so let me. Ex- uh, and that's when that's when you get a seat. Yeah, is when you redeem that code. Okay. Well, let me let me explain uh, how what I saw at the theater when I when I saw it. So I I'm at the theater. Uh, credits start rolling, um, and then. Uh, after a minute or so, Jim Caviezel comes on the screen and he starts talking mm-hmm. about the importance of seeing it in theaters. And a woman who had been walking out of the theater literally stopped and turned around and looked at him and wa- and listened to his speech about, the again, the importance of seeing movies in theaters. Uh, you know, th- we think everybody should have a chance to see this. Uh, cost should not be a barrier. Um, if you can't, uh, if, if you enjoyed what you saw and you want to help somebody else who can't afford see the movie, uh, to see it, uh, scan this QR code, QR code comes up, uh, and you can pay it forward. You can, you can buy a ticket for somebody. She literally, she pulls out her camera and as best as I could tell from, you know, two or three rows back, literally right there in the theater, bought a ticket for somebody. And that, uh, that was something I'd never seen, never seen anything like that before. That, that was crazy to me. Yeah. So, all right. So, so let me, so let me just see if I, so that money, so the money that she paid for that ticket, let's just say, assume she, she bought one ticket, you know, 10 bucks or whatever, whatever the average cost is. Um, that goes to, that goes to basically a, a big pool. And then when somebody goes yep. to your website and asks for a ticket, they get a code that is paid for out of that pool. And then when they redeem that code uh, at Adam Tickets or Fandango or wherever, whichever theater, it's only then that the money is counted toward the overall box office take. Is that right? So when when they, that's when they get a seat. Mm-hmm. That money isn't actually, like if you um, get a code and you don't use it, like I saw somebody saying, oh, look at all these codes I got. They didn't understand it. Like if they don't go to Adam, which has tons of anti-bot stuff, Mm -hmm. and our system has anti-bot stuff, um, then if they actually don't go use the code, then it never buys a seat. And so, um, and then as a viewer, as the person who buys the codes, you actually get a dashboard that shows this person in this place used it and this person in this place. Like you get you get a dashboard that shows where the codes went to so that you know how many codes went out for your your purchase. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh, and, and again, just to like clarify for folks, because I, I get a lot of questions about this, uh, it, the the. It, when that when that lady in the theater uh, did the pay it forward, that's not what counts towards the 152 million so far. Is that right? No, no. that okay. doesn't. That's not how. Okay. That's not how the there's a, there's a uh, the way that the box office is calculated is done by a different team. That's not me, um, but they work with Comscore and they work out how that all yeah. happens. And so I I don't have like. I, but they're they're much smarter at that than yeah. than I am. But yes, the 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 like there will be pay it forwards that actually end up not in the U.S. box office, but like go to um, there'll be some that end up going to Mexico box office mm-hmm. or to other countries box offices to help people see this movie around the world. Mm-hmm. When when are you guys rolling out around the world? So August thirty first, we have. Um, the la- most of Latin America, I think it's it's August 31st. There's a blog post on this. If you go to angel.com slash blog, you'll see all the updates. But um, there's a, a rollout across Mexico, uh, across Latin America, except for Brazil, which will be in September in in August. And, um, and then 
The UK is coming out very soon. There, I mean, I can't even keep up. There's so many. It's on angel.com slash blog. There's all the release dates. And uh, what's crazy is, so my wife's Brazilian and I speak Portuguese and we, we spend a lot of time in Brazil. And the biggest influencers in Brazil are already all arguing about this movie even though they haven't even seen it mm -hmm. yet. <laughs> it's just like, it's already like gigantic arguments about they're reading the American reviews and then they're all taking sides of which which side of the, the this like, the, these, the, 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 the uh, controversy are they on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, that, uh, as somebody who is familiar in the United States with people, with critics seeing movies at festivals and then them not coming out for months and months, I am used to that sort of argument domestically. That is a, that's an, a, it's always, it's always funny to get wrapped up in those. Um, let me, let me ask, are you handling the distribution in all the foreign territories? You know, so to explain for some, yeah. some folks who don't understand, you know, a lot of the times a studio will sell the right, especially independent studios will sell the foreign rights to, um, to cover production costs or other things. But are you guys handling the, di the distribution rights around the world? So Angel Studios has direct relationship with theaters all over the world. There are areas where we don't have direct relationships and we use uh, a third party. But our goal is to have as many direct relationships as possible. Um, so we do all of US, Canada, almost the entire um, scope of Latin America and many other countries where we're just direct with the theaters mm -hmm. and that that so when a filmmaker comes to us theaters the the distributors aren't coming and taking 20 percent off the top before we take our cut and then or they take their cut and we take our cut and our the angel model actually we're at the bottom of the waterfall with the filmmaker we don't uh we don't take a distribution fee off the top like most distributors mm -hmm. we believe that I just, you can know how much a distributor believes in your content by how big their distribution fee is. The bigger the distribution fee, the less they believe in the content because mm -hmm. they don't expect to have profits at the bottom of the of the waterfall. Yeah. Uh, well, that uh, the 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 whole distribution, the economics of distribution. That's a topic for another podcast. I could do, you know we could do an hour on that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we could we could dive into that. Which we're we're like just just top line Angel Studios. We've had it reviewed by many third parties that are major finance guys in in the Hollywood system, and they have said Angel Studios pays out, on a successful film, pays out more money than any other distributor in the world. And Angel Studios, they said, they told us, they said, if you don't pick winners, your model won't work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, we're a new studio, and they're like, so you guys have to have a ton of confidence in the Angel Guild to pick the winners, or else your model's not going to work because you're not taking the fees that everybody else takes at the top, and you're only taking when the projects win. Yeah. Uh, man, uh, I have so many questions. Uh, the, the the in in terms of the the relationships um, with the theaters, uh, you know, I. I there, there, you guys, you guys tweeted out something because some people were complaining. Oh, the air conditioners aren't working at the AMC's. You know, uh, uh, like mm -hmm. the. But you guys were like, "Look, AMC's been great to us. We, we, we have yes. a great working relationship with AMC. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's not their fault. We have a great um, working relationship with all the exhibitors. We're, we're very close. to Well, them. how did you guys? So how? Do, I, I mean, how, could you could you talk a little bit about how that how that came together? Because I mean, I I imagine that you know theaters are wary about you know getting involved with with independent. Distributors, independent studios, they don't know yeah. for sure how it's going to work, you know? So we did our first two theatrical releases with Fathom Events. Mm -hmm. So we did a Chosen Christmas uh, Christmas episode a couple years ago, and then we did episodes one and two of The Chosen season three. Mm -hmm. Chosen, for those who don't know, is a massive top five in the world TV series that's been viewed by over probably 100 and th somewhere between 130 and 150 million people worldwide. And... Um, that's a, an Angel original project. And so we did their, their the, those two theatrical releases with Fathom. And Fathom, we said, hey, we have a huge following. Like, this is a massive following. You got to get as many theaters as you can um, right out the gate, as many showtimes as you can. And they said, no, we understand our model. And then we sold them out. I think on that first one, we, we completely crashed their website and everything was sold out within a day. And... Uh, just, I mean, they couldn't keep up with the sales. 
that that first theatrical release did I don't remember if it was twelve or fifteen million dollars. The second one did another same same kind of range, mm-hmm. and um, we cl- we quickly realized that Fathom's really good for event cinema. Like they're amazing. They're a great partner. But when a movie actually takes off beyond the event cinema, they 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 they, did, they didn't work. It didn't work for us quite right. And so we said, well, we we've just got to go direct to the theaters so that we can get um, get the theaters the kind of margins they need in order to give us the seats that we need when we have a breakout. Mm-hmm. And so with his only son, we switched and went direct to the theaters. And because we had they had seen this this momentum. That our uh, the Angel Studios community drives that they said, okay, well, let's go ahead and let's do this as an experiment with his only son, and we took his only son and put it to number three in the box office, and it had a twelve million dollar run on a very low budget film that's very very well done. It's a beautiful cinematic film. The filmmaker did um i mean it's it's stunningly beautiful it's probably i think it's the only faith like modern faith-based film that has both a positive rotten tomato score from the critics and from the viewers that rarely rarely happens in 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 any faith base but it's the story of abraham and you're just in the wilderness with abraham for three days with his thoughts as he's trying to figure out what he's going to do when he sacrificed isaac so it's a very like uh, meditative, deep, contemplative film has to be seen in theaters. You have to give up all your distractions to enjoy a movie like that. And um, and so this this one blew up. And then because of that, we had the ability to take the next step and say, "All right, that was successful. Um, now we got Sound of Freedom." Um, let's go for July 4th, which was the theaters actually at first were like, oh, I don't know if you should do that. <laughs> and, and then they watched the movie. And then I, I think AMC was one of the first to say, you know what? This is, this is something that we think will work. Yeah. And they jumped on board. And so did Cinemark and so did Regal. And the independents took a little bit longer, but they... They all came on board, and then the ticket sales. I mean, if you see the first week is big, but it was just capped out. You couldn't, we couldn't sell enough tickets because there weren't the seats up against Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. And then once they saw that they were selling out everything, then they were like, "Okay, let's move to the bigger auditoriums." And then, and then we we really crushed it until uh, Barbenheimer was the first one to actually kind of like take us off the, the, the track a little bit. Uh, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's crushing everybody. Uh, the, yeah. the, uh, well, I mean, uh, the other, the other thing that's been really interesting, just watching the box office numbers again daily, which I do cause I'm a uh, nerd. The, 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 di- the weekday numbers have been amazing for, uh, yep. sound, sound of freedom. I mean, I, we're, I like, we're, you know, we're still talking about $2 million a day or so. Um, yep. And the only other movies that are putting up numbers like that are Barbie and, and Oppenheimer, uh, of course. Um, uh, but even like I think Mission Impossible is uh, under a million now. Uh, you know, it's 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 uh, yeah. it's crazy. The the weekday. I think traffic that's is happening. Crazy. I think that's happening because the auditoriums aren't big enough. Because Barbenheimer is so big, the auditoriums aren't big enough to give the supply that's needed for the audience on the weekends, and so it's pushing the demand out into the weekdays. Mm-hmm. It's forcing people to say, you know, I don't want to wait another week or I don't I don't want to go fight the crowds on the weekend, so I'm going to go on a weekday. And um, and it's the only time and even on weekdays at the prime times of each weekday, those are sold out too, so it's pushing out into even like matinees and people are just taking making time to watch the movie because their friends are telling them about it or like I saw a live stream with Ellen where everybody was commenting in Ellen, like you need to go see sound of freedom. You know, like the, 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 the fans are really, really adamant that everybody needs to watch this movie. Yeah. I, it, it's, uh, I, again, it was it was interesting reading uh, one of a guest on this show before Ryan Fonder uh, at the LA times interviewed a, a, um, a operator of a midsize chain in the Midwest. Uh, and he asked about, he asked about sound of freedom and, you know, like there's, you know, uh, people, people on Twitter talking about empty auditoriums and whatever. And the guy was like, no, look, I've had my, uh, I've had my employees in there doing spot checks to make sure, you know, 
that's that's not yep. the case and they're you know the the theaters are full and um honestly i think i think those there, there's a, there's these sparse very few examples other than a i think there's a few fraudsters that like go and they take a picture of a showtime that looks full and then they go and they they're just trying to make make up controversy but other than that what what usually happens is you've got a lot of businesses like the, the there's a lot of businesses that are buying tickets like a group group set of tickets for their their employees and if they don't market that well enough inside their company which happens sometimes if a mm -hmm. CEO or somebody says hey let's go everybody go to this movie and then they turn it over to somebody who doesn't care and then people just maybe in some circumstances there's a big block of tickets where that business didn't get a turnout that's that's the normal uh, it's completely normal for for a, a film that has a lot of group mm -hmm. purchases happening from businesses all over the country or yeah. um, or groups of any kind. Do you have a sense of what percentage are group purchases or? It, it's so tiny. I don't. Yeah. Uh, we we don't even. Um, I mean, it, it's so small that. I, I don't have the number in front of me, but it's it's not it's not yeah. gigantic. It's it, but it's enough that there will be some examples, yeah. right? And it, and if those are all amplified, then it, it's like it's like the air conditioning thing. It was a heat wave. There were theaters that literally because the the box offices just haven't been that big since mm -hmm. the pandemic. D there were theaters that hadn't opened up certain auditoriums until this summer, and so they open them up, and then. They haven't been maintained properly. There's a heat wave, and then the AC goes down, yeah. and so so there was probably more than normal AC units going down across the country, and we're the one that's coming up from the bottom. So they're like, "Hey, we need to open a new theater for Sound of Freedom." You know, this this yeah. is my layman's explanation of what what ha what what well. happened there, and and so they 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 have that there there have been some, um, uh, like. If you go to the original launch day Reddit threads, there are some like partisan employees of theaters. So there could be a few things going on where the guys, the, 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 you got some hardcores coming to the theater that are really concerned. They've seen these rumors online and they're, they're getting upset. And then the employees are already like, I don't agree with this person's politics. And then they kind of collude to create controversy that mm -hmm. just doesn't exist you know like they're they're almost like it's like a cycle yeah um so i i um but the it's just it's just a heat wave it's actually a really good sign for theaters um that they they have to open up these auditoriums it's a like it, this is these last couple of weeks have been the biggest in yeah. in since the pandemic well, so yeah, I mean, last weekend was the biggest <laughs> final July in the history of the box office. Now, I mean, granted, a lot of that is you know Barbie and Oppenheimer, but I mean, yeah, having an extra you know fifteen million on the fourth or fifth yep. weekend or whatever of, uh, yep. of Sound of Freedom helps. Um, all right, so yeah, let's... and and it, well, well, and if you if you look at like Rolling Stone, one of the Rolling Stone writers went on and he asked, "Hey, I just want to know well, how are you seeing theaters?" He, he went on a Reddit thread that just has theater owners and theater employees and said, what, 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 are, what are you seeing on the ground? And almost universally, it was, my theaters are packed. This has saved my summer. So, like there were the theater owners that are saying, Sound of Freedom saved my summer. And um, he deleted the thread after, I, I think he was looking for different types of comments, but um, <laughs> you can, I tweeted out a copy, a, a link to the thread and some pictures of it, but, but he, um, yeah, he, he he just learned from the theater owners that this is this is a real hefty movement with this with this release. Yeah, um, let me. So again, the the thing that sticks in my mind after seeing this movie is the woman at the end who literally paid it forward in the theater. I like a, like little smoke puff out of my head, blew my mind. Um, uh, does that? Do you think that that kind of model will work for? Uh, for movies, uh, for for non Angel Studios movies, right? Is there is there is that the sort of thing that you know, civil rights pictures could uh, could could champion? I mean, I I'm like I yeah. I'm trying to think of yeah. how to expand this beyond because mm -hmm. like I'm not gonna nobody's gonna buy a ticket to pay it forward for the new Transformers movie or you mm -hmm. know the new the new big blockbuster 
whatever, right? But like other movies that create that kind of sense of mission and, and purpose, um, yeah, might I think work so. There. I think absolutely. I think it will work. It will work at different levels depending on. Um, yeah, I think a civil rights movie. I mean, we've got some some content coming that's down that vein. Um, the I movement based movies that uplift people and inspire people. I mean, it work. Pay it forwards work on coffee at Starbucks. That's kind of where it comes from is people saying, Hey, I'm going to pay for the person behind me. And then that person pays for the person behind them. And that person like that's coffee. That's not a movement. People like paying it forward. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a great experience. And, um, it, it, it's just doing a good turn for, for the next person. And, um, so it's going to, it's going to work on, it's going to work better on some movies than others. But it, I think, I think this is something that isn't going to go away. Yeah. Uh, I always like to close these interviews by asking if there's anything I should have asked, if you think there's anything folks should know about, uh, either re, w with what you're doing, state of the industry in general. Uh, what what did I fail to ask that people should know about? I think filmmakers can know. Um, there's been this big concern that independent films with new storylines don't have a chance in the theatrical world. And that's that has been kind of the trend for a while. But I think that's because... You just need someone else. Like people love movies, and and I, I believe. So there, there's a. I believe theatrical has a very bright future, and the reason why is because we are so suffocated with screens and social media that people are looking for a way to set down. They need um, the Rabbit Room blog. For, by Andrew Peterson, who does the the Wing Feather Saga series, which is a best selling book series that we have an animated uh, series about, the Wing Feather Saga, and it's in the Angel Studios app. But Andrew Peterson's blog, The Rabbit Room, talks about how the, the, a blog post called the the Sacrament of Cinema, and the, the similarities between going to a church and setting aside all your distractions and focusing completely on one thing for a period of time to rest your mind and to allow you to rejuvenate and heal and in the, in the case of a sacrament you're it's it's Christ that you're focused on um but when you go to the cinema you're 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 intentionally surrendering every bit of distraction you have you're turning off your phones you're leaving work behind you're leaving your family problems behind you're leaving everything behind and, and people who are listening to me especially people who love cinema understand this feeling it's an escape and a focus and you just get to hear with a message of what that director says and what that story that's been crafted just for you is and you do it in a communal setting there are people getting up at the end of Sound of Freedom and doing standing applauses all over the country. And there are people hugging each other, complete strangers. We, we, like you just go through Reddit and you go through social media, it's all over the place. And, but that's because there's this like communal moment for cinema. And so people have been saying, oh, it's gonna, home theaters are now cheaper and the big screen is cheap at home. But at home, I can push the pause button. And I can get distracted. And I can voluntarily get distracted. And you don't have the meditative experience that you get when you walk into a theater and, and just surrender everything to, to be disconnected from your phones and from the internet and from all the troubles in your life and just focus and have a like what oftentimes can be a life-changing experience. And so um, that's why I think as... as connectivity gets stronger, the cinemas are actually going to strengthen. The, the brokenness of their model doesn't have to do with the experience. It has to do with the fact that um, Hollywood is just operating on old systems. And Angel Studios has cracked that nut. And now producers can say, I can get big money bigger money. I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend going and raising 100 plus million dollars for a film. <laughs> But good budgets for great stories are now possible again because we've cracked the nut. And, and it, if you have a story that amplifies light and, and tell and uplifts people and brings meaning, you know, the, uh, you're, you're going to have a home 
available at Angel Studios for the, the fantastic creators. Let me ask just one one exit question here because you, you do mention budgets. Uh, Sound of Freedom, my, my understanding, costs about 13, 14 million in that range. Yeah, 14.5. Um, and uh, you said the shift cost about six and a half. Yeah, that... six and so a half. What are you, what, I, like in terms of budgets? What are what are you uh, working with? Is it just whatever you can raise? I mean, do you do you have a, a like a do you have a cap? What are what are you just well, playing the, with in terms of the, the story? Kind of caps people out. So like we have a budget coming in twenty twenty four. That's a sixty two million dollar film called David. It's an animated movie. That's uh, the story of King David and um, the, 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 you know, the ancient Jewish story. And he's one of the most famous stories of all time. And it, because he's a musician in the real story, it's a musical, but it's a, it, it has music that is motivated because he's one of the greatest musicians. The whole entire book, Jewish book of Psalms is all written. Most of that's written by David. He's one of the greatest musicians in the history of the world. And so he, there's motivated music because he's singing to the king and the king saw in the king's court. But it's this incredible animated series coming out of a studio out of South Africa that they are going to do with $62 million, what the big studios do with well over $100, $150 million because mm -hmm. they just know how to use their money well. So that's a big one. That's a big swing. That's coming in 2020. Uh, five that will launch in 2025 it's been in production right now and it's a and they have raised the money I, I think they just have a few million dollars left to raise um then there's another one coming out in march of next year which is multi, uh, much larger budgets it's called cabrini i don't think the budgets are public right now but they probably will be at some point but cabrini is the story of a forgotten american hero uh, Mother Cabrini that came, an Italian immigrant who, uh, as a nun, that stood up against the Pope, stood up against the government in New York, and stood up and stood between the system that was corrupted and broken and hundreds of thousands of immigrant children. And she knew that if she failed, they would, they, 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 these kids would continue to die. And she changed the entire, like, she, I, I it's a, it's a movie that I, I'm ashamed that I didn't even know her story before meeting these filmmakers. But this movie is going to put her on the map in a big way, and everybody will know the name of Cabrini. And that's the, done by the same director as Sound of Freedom. You can see the Cabrini trailer online right now. Cabrini, Angel Studios, just search, search for that, and you'll see it. And it, this, this, like the way it's described is this isn't a motion picture. This is a motion painting. Every single frame of this movie is unlike anything you've ever seen. And they have an amazing story of why that happened and um, why it be, like, it's just, it's a stunning film. My wife said top, top three of all time when she screened the movie for her. Yeah. And, and, and we're getting top three, top one of all time for almost yeah. everybody we're screening it with. All right. So Sound of Freedom, the, the, but those are bigger budget films. Sound of, Sound of Freedom is going to be Cabrini. That's what we're, yeah. Uh, the director, the okay. director of Sound of Freedom did Cabrini and they're very different projects. They're very different. They have different looks, but Alejandro Monteverde is an underrated director and he is, um, a master and yeah. you'll, you'll see it. Just, just watch the trailer and you're going to see it. Like she's, she's a, she's a hero that, um, isn't a hero because she's doing manly things. She's not like killing a bunch of dudes and wearing, you know, like blowing stuff up and things. She's a hero because she's doing things, standing up to the Vatican, standing up to the government in ways that only a woman can. And at a time where women can't vote, at a time where they can't own property, <laughs> like she's, I, Mother Teresa's entire life was in, like, she built her life around this lady, Cabrini. Yeah. All right. Uh, Thank you very much for being on the show, Jeffrey. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, again, Sound of Freedom still in theaters, so you can go. You can go see it. I have a feeling it's going to be playing, you know, through the through through the fall yep. uh, at least, uh, with the numbers that it continues to put up on a daily basis. So, check it out if you haven't. Uh, my name is Sonny Bunch. I'm culture editor at the Bulwark, and I will be back next week with another episode of the Bulwark Goes to Hollywood. We'll see you guys then. Mm -hmm. 
you loved Lala Kent on Vanderpump Rules. Now get to know her on Give Them Lala. Is it weird having a million things to talk about and the only thing he wanted to talk about is Bravo? Yes, and it's always weird. It's like when I went to the White House Correspondents' Dinner and thought that this was my chance to like make a change and they were like, well, enough about change. Scandal. <laughs> and then I have so many questions for Howie that had nothing to do, and he was like, so scandal. Give them Lala wherever you listen.